Article 29, shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $43,525 for the purpose of adding three new windows to the children's room, which is on the basement level of the Lane Memorial Library. This shall be a non-lapsing appropriation per RSA 32 colon 7 Roman 6 and will not lapse until the purpose of this article is completed or by March 31, 2019, whichever is sooner. Majority vote required. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen 4-1. Not recommended by the Budget Committee 6-6. Six six. The fiscal impact note, the estimated 2017 tax impact on uh, this article is 1.3 cents per thousand dollars of valuation. Is there a motion to open discussion on Article 29? Moved by Ms. Barnes, seconded by Mr. Griffin. Is there anyone who wishes to be heard? Our library director is here. Um, would you like to speak to Article 29? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Just to put it really simply, the room should have been designed with this, many, with this few windows 34 years ago. The fact that we have lived with it for 34 years doesn't make it any less true. It does not have adequate lighting. The room is too dark for anyone, for the public that visits the library or the staff who work there. That's not just my opinion, that's also the standards of the state of New Hampshire. The 1983 Demar the Department of Labor standards for minimum interior lighting were lower than they are today. They've updated those standards and we have changed nothing in the basement. <laughs> um, in 1983, when we designed the building, Science's knowledge of what daylight effect on brain chemistry were non-existent. Now we know that exposure to daylight affects your emotional and physical well-being. In 1983, we hadn't had a young woman light a fire in our basement between two emergency exits lighting our promotional posters on fires. We've had that since 2007. That's a reality that we live with. And so knowing that we could add an emergency exit that would be utilized in the case of something like that again is important. The windows aren't gonna fix every single lighting problem we have in the basement, but they're a good first step. In 2015 in Illinois, in a town not much small, much larger than Hampton, someone took a chess club hostage in the basement of their library. Having an additional emergency exit is a really important element to providing safety for our library. This is a one-time cost warrant article. Uh, there's no bond, no repeat expense. We even expect that our electric bills may be further reduced by adding these windows. I know that there's a lot of money articles coming forward this year. I tried to avoid making a hard decision by holding this article back last year. With that said, this is my responsibility, the library. How that affects Hampton's experience is the only thing that I have to be concerned with. I can't hold back the well-being, the maintenance, the improvement of the library every year deferring to other, other needs. The average homeowner in Hampton would pay $4.55 in total to see these windows added, and every, every user of the library would thank you. We have the support of the Board of Selectmen. We have the support of a majority of the Budget Committee. Um, the chance did not allow us to get that officially recorded, and I'd like you to add your support on March 14th. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cooper. Ms. Lissau. Good afternoon, Keith Lissard, 173 Mill Road. I rise in support of the Article 2 enhance the children's reading room by adding three windows that will add natural sunlight. It will add additional egress to the library and it will add comfort to the room. I think it's very important that the children's room be a uh, place that has ample sunlight and adequate egress to um, get out in case of an emergency. I think it's the right thing to do, and please support um, the Lane Library um, for the small amount of money. I know it's money, but it's a small amount of money that will improve that area of the library. Thank you. Remember, people still like to hold books and read them. It's a tactical experience, and I think that we're, we're losing this, and if we don't have our kids reading and having a good time in the library, it um, doesn't hold good for our future. This isn't going to hold back our whole future, but please support the windows. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lassard. Mr. Kravitz. Yeah. Senator Kravitz, A. St. Cyr, Gerard Hampton. I'm not opposed to replacing the windows. My concern is Bill Tessick, the IT person, was at the library for 40 years. His salary, when you include benefits, was about $80,000 a year. Is they have a budget of over 860000 They have a, investments in Vanguard of 120 some odd thousand. 
they have plenty of money, they could do it out of their budget. That's my concern. I don't see why they need a warrant out of it. There's so many unmet needs in the warrants. You know, it just doesn't make sense. They could do it out of their own cash flow. Thank you, Mr. Kravitz. Anyone else wish you be heard, Mr. Jones? I don't believe anyone on the budget committee was opposed to the windows. Um, some of us were opposed to them for different reasons. One was, some argued that three windows for $45,000 or roughly that is just too much for windows. Uh, my particular position was that the library has a separate fund for capital improvements. And so there's no reason to use a Warren article to fund this. They have well over $100,000 in that fund. And the response we got was, well, we don't want to use the money in the fund. Well, uh, I'm okay with the project. It's a funding mechanism. It's still being discussed. Uh, it, it, the, the budget committee may reconsider it at a subsequent meeting. That is not certain in my mind whether it will happen or not. Um, but it's, it's kind of a tough call. Uh, not anyone is having a tough call with having the windows themselves. I think everyone's okay with the windows. It's really pretty much funding. How to fund it best. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Yes, sir. Brian Lobham, 27 I Street. Um, part of the uh, follow-up on Mr. Jones said, um, they have the money. This is not a town. This is a library. So therefore, the keeping of the 5% just doesn't make sense as far as the windows go. Um, I again agree with Mr. Jones that yes, we had no problem with the windows, but the fact that the money is already there um, is why we voted the way we did. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lapp. Uh, Mr. Page. Nathan Page, 200 Drakeside Road. Just a quick question here for us. People that say 90, uh, that amount of money for windows, it's not the windows, they have to cut concrete. They have to cut a hole in the side of the building. That costs money as well. The, hundred, the amount of money the library trustees have in their trust fund is to maintain their, the rest of the property, the, the books, if something were to happen to, to do other things. The structure is a town structure. We need the town should maintain its structures. And so we, I would be in full support of the library uh, window, new construct, the new construction of windows, cutting them into the building, and it, it would be in favor of that. The, and we should pay for it by the, the town should pay for it with the town funds. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Page. Uh, anyone else wishing to be heard? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hi, my name is Anthony Cullo. I'm president here for the last 15 years. These are my two boys. Can I say your name? Hi. <laughs> Titus. Titus and Aurelius Cullo. These guys have been going to the library since they were like, how old? Um, since we were born. Well, my, my wife would hang out there when they were born. Two years old. So probably since they were two years old. And the librarians have watched these boys grow up. And we really support this. Um, I feel like I, I always tell people that the library is like as great as the ocean. Because, like, you know, living on the coast, we love the sea, right? We're always, that's why we're here. We're drawn to it. The library was like, it was like a hidden surprise. It's like, oh my God, you got to be kidding me. And we spent a lot of time there. So, right? Yeah. That's all. Thank you. Uh, just for the, uh, for the town clerk, your address in Hampton Hill? Uh, 7 Keen Lane. Thank you. Yep. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Ms. Barnes. Regina Barnes, 95 Presidential Circle. So the, the room at the library has been the same way for 34 years. I enjoyed that room as a child. I was five. Um, I think as times change, things need to happen. There needs to be windows down there. 
it's a hazard. If something were to happen, this could serve as another emergency exit for the children of our town, for the visiting children of our town. Now, if the library were to use their trust funds for this, it would be 38% of their funds for this, and they don't feel comfortable spending that much money. So I like everyone to think about that, and uh, I hope to see this article move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Barnes. Mr. Pierce. Thank you. Mike Pierce, uh, 84 Lock Road. <clears throat> After hearing everything about this at the budget committee meetings, I come to the conclusion in my own mind we're cutting into a solid concrete wall, which everybody knows if you start chopping it in half in various places, it loses its structural integrity. And it was not explained to me that that would, the, the, the floor above the basement would be adequately supported after we did all this. So I'm not, that's why I voted against it. It didn't look like to me it was a structurally good idea. Now, whether it is or not, I'm not a structural engineer, so I'm not going to argue that point. But that wasn't presented in such a way to convince me it was a safe thing to do to an old building. Like my house, it needs to have some timbers re reinforced, and if I don't do it someday, the house might fall in. Well, I don't want to see the library fall in on these wonderful kids down in the basement. So that was my concern for voting against it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. Anyone else yes. wishing to be heard on um, Mr. this Mark article? Right Mr. Griffin, yeah. and then the chief. I, I just wanted to uh, throw out there that I'm replacing, I have a stucco uh, building, and I'm replacing a window, and I was really surprised when it approached $10,000. $9,100 was the amount. But the reason why it is so much is they take in consideration the structuralness uh, of the building, and they can do things that keep it safe. But it is expensive these days, and I think that library is something that a lot of people use, and uh, I think an enhancement there is overdue. Thank you, Mr. Griffin. Chief Aya. Thank you. Good afternoon. I rise in support of this article as well. Um, uh, during the discussion when this warrant article was being proposed, there was a construction question that went to our fire prevention office, and the design of the windows uh, does mean that there will be better egress from a safety standpoint. Our greatest natural resource resides in that room, it's our children. And to have them have the ability to leave in an expedient manner if there's an emergency, I think that that can't be uh, understood. So please, I support this and I would ask that you do too. Thank you, Chief Ayotte. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Ms. Hamm? Uh, I'm speaking as a resident of Hampton on this one and I just wanted to reiterate uh, three things that I've just heard. Um, one, that these are our kids, these are our children, these are, as the classic song goes, our future. Um, we sit in offices where we hear about if repetitive motion and damage, about not the right light, all these other things. Why would it be okay for kids to sit in it if it's not having the right um, light and you know, natural sunlight? Um, I want to speak to the fact that these are windows being replaced and cutting into a wall. Um, this isn't a handyman who's going to be doing this work. This is a designed uh, solution. This is something that has been looked at by engineers. As an engineer, you would not um, say, let's cut into a concrete wall and hope that it doesn't fall. You either say it is or it isn't. Um, so I really don't think that that's a fair uh, assumption as to why this project shouldn't occur. Uh, and third is just one of the things that We've heard here today, I've been speaking on behalf of the Public Works, and we do have a lot of articles moving forward, um, but it is not a reason to not to vote for this project. This is as important uh, for the library, for the children who use the library, for the staff that uses this library, and so I recommend uh, everybody voting in support. Thank you, Ms. Hale. Ms. Cooper? Thank you for letting me speak again. Um, a lot of question today about whether or not the library has this money just sitting away in a bank ready to pay for this. The trustees of the trust fund, or excuse me, the trustees of the library hold funds in a Vanguard account established by Sonny Kravitz when he was a trustee um, that they hold and they invest, that they're building on. They're not, it's not a capital reserve fund. It was never established that way. It's not meant to be dipped into every time we want to change the library. It's held 
primarily because we are not part of the town's financial structure. And if something happens and the library needs to pay for it, it's on the library. We can't find money some other way. If a major emergency happens, one of the other things that comes up, if any sort of litigation ever took place with the library, the only money we have is that money. It's not set up for us to add windows, add bathrooms, change doorways. It's set up to be our safety net, and I don't want to spend our safety net. Thank you, Ms. Cooper. <laughs> All right. Um, we've seen no one further on this article. Uh, it will appear, um, Article 29, uh, the windows in the library will appear on the ballot as printed.